Hello, Fight fans. I'm that boxing writer, Jeremy Harridges, here with another episode of Boxing and Coffee. Welcome. It is Friday, May 14th, day before the Luis Netty versus Brandon Figueroa matchup on Showtime. So we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, a preview and prediction for that fight. Um, but before all that, it's been a while since I've been here for Boxing and Coffee. Um, been on about a, like a, a three-week hiatus with, with the show primarily because I've been so busy, boxing interviews, boxing stories, boxing, 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 hasn't given me a whole lot of time to, to get back on a schedule to, to, to do boxing and coffee. So I wanted to make sure that I dropped one today, letting you know that it's back and there's going to be a finite schedule going forward. Um, starting next week, plan on three shows a week. So on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I will have a boxing and coffee episode up um, try to have them up by 9.30 a.m. Central. Uh, that, of course, would be 10.30 a.m. Uh, Eastern. So check those out. Uh, we'll be talking about all things boxing and all that. But yeah, just been super busy. I'm still working on the, um, what was it called? Grizzly Claw Coffee from Kicking Horse Coffees. Still working my way through that. I'm remote right now. I'm on the road again <laughs> with the a uh, fake image of my boxing happy place behind me. I'm rocking some uh, McDonald's coffee. Again, you can't see it because of my screen right now. Uh, but one of my go-to coffees on the road while I'm, I'm, I'm working and doing different things. So let's talk about this. Uh, oh, and be sure to like and subscribe. Do that so I can help grow this thing out. We're, what, seven away from, from my first 100 subscribers on, on YouTube and always appreciate that. Um, but let's talk boxing for the weekend. If you haven't been paying attention to the channel, had some, some good interviews recently. Heather the Heat Hardy, who's back in action after a 20-month layoff. She's fighting tonight on the 14th on UFC Fight Pass. Um, I think it's 8.30 Eastern is when it starts off on, on, on that. She's jumping up to lightweight, two divisions up from where she campaigned as a champion, as a featherweight. Uh, so she'll be in action tonight. Then also, of course, we've got the matchups tomorrow, but um, I have, I've talked to several of the fighters on the Showtime card tomorrow. Boxers that I talked to, I talked to Xavier Martinez, talked to Danny Roman, um, and I also talked to Brandon Figueroa going into their fights for tomorrow. So let's do a recap. Oh, also interviews. Uh, you can read my interview and, and my write-up on the Heather Hardy piece on fansided.com slash boxing. Also, my pieces on Brandon Figueroa, Xavier Martinez, and Danny Roman should be up there shortly as well later on today. So make sure to go to fansided.com slash boxing to check it out and, and all the other good stuff that's going on there as far as boxing coverage goes. But let's get into the nitty-gritty with this, uh, this May 15th matchup. Um, I'm going to start with some of the undercards. First of all, uh, you've got uh, Gabrielle Fundora, the sister of Sebastian Fundora, making her debut uh, at super flyweight. And I think she's gonna have something special. Again, the Fundora family, they are all boxers. So I think Gabriella is gonna be a name to watch as she moves up the ranks, making her debut, was very successful as an amateur. So it'll be a kick to see her in action. Um, one of the fighters I talked to, Xavier Martinez, super featherweight, who's going to be tested once again against Juan Carlos Burgos. Not an easy fight. Um, Xavier Martinez is a young guy. Um, you know, he's 23 years old, part of the Mayweather Promotions uh, stable of fighters. I know he's one of their young fighters that they're really excited about. Really nice guy. We talked a lot of time. Uh, about Chris Colbert and the the war of the words going between the two of them. But again, he's got his hands filled with, with Juan Carlos Burgos, who's never been stopped before. Sure, he's lost, but he's never been stopped, and he's been in against good opposition. So a, a good win over Juan Carlos Burgos would be uh, a nice addition to the budding resume of Xavier Martinez. Interested to see how he does against Juan Carlos Burgos to see, hey, you know, he's a prospect. Can he make that jump up into legitimate contender status? And I think that's what we're waiting to see right now. Um, so that should be an exciting fight. I've got my money on, on, on Xavier Martinez. Um, I see the fight ending by decision. I, I just think um, Burgos has a great chin. I don't see him getting the knockout there, 
but hopefully he can show kind of a, his full display of his boxing skills. Um, Danny Ramon, uh, you know, former champion, going to be in action uh, against, um, who do we got here? I'm looking at the bout sheet right now. Ricardo Espinosa Franco, a guy that's not really well known, someone that he should beat pretty easily. Uh, but let's not forget that Danny Ramon was a unified super bantamweight champion. And he lost a, a very close fight to Akhmedali of, uh, back in January of, of 2020. So he never got a rematch. Obviously, COVID hit, and that may have had something to do with it, but he never got the rematch. So I know that he's been kind of waiting in the wings for a shot. And I know that he, he, he basically wants anybody that's willing to fight him that's got a belt. He wants a belt. He wants a championship. Um, whether it's Akhmedaliev, whether it's the, the winner of Figueroa versus Neddy, um, he, wants, he wants a championship out. And I think he deserves one. Um, he's 31 years old, so he's not as young as some of these other guys, but still at 31 years old, a fighter's in their prime. So I think there's a lot left within Danny Ramon. Um, and I think this Franco fight is, is really just kind of keeping him active, keeping him going as he's waiting for a big fight. And it'll be interesting to see where he ends up landing. But um, Danny Ramon, I think, has a big win there. Um, is it by knockout? I mean, he's not really known as a knockout puncher. I think he's only at like 31% for a KO rating. But I think Danny Ramon is, is going to box a one-sided matchup. The main event, Brandon Figueroa versus Luis Netty for the WBC Super Bantamweight title held by Netty. Uh, and then, of course, you've got Figueroa, who has the WBA regular super bantamweight title um we can talk about the legitimacy of the wba's regular titles you know it's a piece of hardware it turns a 10 round fight into a 12 round fight whatever about that and you know but i think more than anything it's that wbc belt i mean this is really figueroa's chance at the big time and it's an interesting matchup and it's really close on the betting lines um I know that when I wrote about this for, for my Figueroa piece, which again, should hopefully be going up soon. Um, he's the betting underdog, but he's at like plus 175 odds right now. So it's very, very, very close. And there's a number of reasons that it's that close. Um, styles make fights, right? And they both like to come forward and both like to attack. We haven't seen the best of Netty in a, in a while. I mean, if we go back to his last fight against Aaron Alameda, he had a very lethargic, unanimous decision, didn't really pop out, um, was working with Eddie Reynoso, it didn't work out, he's got a new trainer now. What's going on with that? So the instability of Luis Netti, I think, is what's really scaring people. The fact that he's kind of in between styles, and now he's trying to go back to an attacking style, which could leave him open. You know, that's, that's the thing that we have to worry about. But he's got that KO power with 77% knockout rating, 31 and 0, 24 KOs. The numbers don't lie. And he's still a young guy at 26 years old. Um, what I think is interesting is the matchup against Brandon Figueroa. I, I don't think, I don't like the matchup for, for Netty just simply because uh, Figueroa is a, a large super bantamweight. He's 5'9", has a nice reach. Um, uh, much longer reach than the Netty. However, again, why they're so close here is that there's so many ifs. Um, when Figueroa fought Julio Seja back in November of 2019, fought him to a draw. And yes, Seja came in close to five pounds overweight, but Seja is not a, a giant fighter. He's not a big, intimidating guy. So maybe he was big wide, um, but I think he was still a couple inches shorter. Um, orthodox fighter that, that, that gave Figueroa a number of problems. Now, Figueroa told me that he had a number of injuries in that fight, which I believe uh, the Figueroa's, unfortunately, him and his brother Omar have both had a history of injuries. Omar had a, a terrible beating in his last fight. I doubt that we see him again. Um, I think he kind of showed what he had left and it wasn't enough. Um, but Brandon's a young guy. I mean, uh, Brandon's just uh, 24 years old, um, 16 Owen, or excuse me, 21 Owen one, 16 KOs. Um, how good can he be? Now, if you judge by the Julio Seaf fight, you've got doubts. If you judge by the Damian Vasquez fight, which was his last fight 
uh, in September of 2020, which he won by TKO and 10. And then you're thinking, okay, he's got something here, but isn't going to be enough to beat a guy like Matty. Uh, so what do we do with this one? Again, it's the ifs that make this one so close on the betting lines. And for good reason, they both have something in their favor. Um, the inconsistency of, of Netty versus uh, the <laughs> inconsistency of Figueroa. Uh, which Figueroa are we going to see? Are we going to see the one that fought Seha or are we going to see the one that stopped Vasquez? So that's what people are thinking. Plus the 5-6 versus the 5-9. My ultimate say on this one. I got to go with the logic here and say that Netty's the knockout puncher. You know, he, he's claiming that he's going back to his old style, more attacking. I got to go with the power. Um, Figueroa has power too, but it's not the eye-catching power of, of a Netty. Um, that's where I really see the differences in, in this one, that, that power. I don't know if, if Figueroa really has the power to, to hurt Netty. Again, 72%. So they're not, there's not a big gulf between them as far as knockout ratings go. Um, Netty obviously has the, the better opposition on his record, and that's why he gets the edge there a little bit. But it's an interesting fight. Now, I'm saying just going from logic, if I'm going to pick a winner, I'm going to go with Netty. If I'm a better, I'm going with the underdog just simply because it's the smart money that it's so close, it's so tight that I could see Figaro pulling off the upset because it wouldn't be a big upset. Um, so, you know, my logic tells me Netty. The better in me says, hey, the chance for money, I go with Figueroa. Ultimately, I think Nettie's going to win. But if you're, if you're looking to gamble on it, then I would gamble with, with Figueroa because I think it's close enough that you could make the argument that he could pull it off. This one's razor thin. And um, both guys have said that they want to come over, um, come at each other, go straight ahead, throw bombs. We'll see if this thing doesn't end in a knockout. Um, if, if they really want to go to war, hey, we very well could have one on our hands here. So I think it's a very intriguing matchup, a lot of ifs, but I'm going with, I'm going with Netty. Um, that's just what my brain's telling me. So do as you will with that one, but I think we're headed for a great fight. Make sure that you head over to fansided.com slash boxing, check out my interviews and, and stuff that I've got going on there. Hear what uh, the pros have been telling me hear what Figueroa had to tell me, hear what uh, Xavier Martinez had to tell me, and of course, Heather Hardy, who fights tonight. Um, make sure to uh, like the video, subscribe, have a question or comment, something you want to hear about. Leave me a message down at the bottom. I see everything. And um, like I said, next week, boxing and coffee, going back to a regular Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule. Um, again, video should be up by 9.30 a.m. Central Time. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.